All right, welcome back to your next episode of .LA Dives In. I'm Kelly O'Grady, .LA's chief host and correspondent. And today I'm joined by Kendall Bird and Sage Grazer, the co-founders of Mental Wellness Network Frame. So welcome ladies, and thank you so much for giving your time today. Hi, thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Uh, so to jump in, I wanna set the stage, You know, the focus on mental health and wellness has increased dramatically over the past couple of years with a new lens on how it can impact everything from personal relationships to employee productivity. And this is only intensified with quarantine necessitating work from home and learning to, or leading to an acute isolation from society. So to kick off, I'd love for you to walk me through how did the idea for Frame come about? So I'll start. And you know, for me, Sage and I both grew up in LA. Um, I've been in therapy since I was 15. Um, I It has been such a big part of my own personal growth journey and different aspects of my life. And I've can sort of on and off consistently seen a therapist. And I was living in New York, working at YouTube and actually took a job um, at Snapchat so I moved back to LA and when I moved back to LA, I was, it was pre IPO. It was super stressful. Um, I was also doing long distance and I just felt like I needed to talk to someone again. It's sort of my go-to going to therapy. And so I went on the discovery process um, so for the first time on my own of finding my own therapist. And I was so shocked at how hard it was to find a therapist. It mm -hmm. took me over eight months. I must've talked to at least six therapists. I spent, over a thousand dollars on different sessions and I just couldn't find someone I clicked with. And I really just felt like if I was someone, I'm someone as my friends like to make fun of me as a, a therapy super fan. I, I love talking about it. I love going to it. And if I'm someone like that, that's having trouble finding a therapist, I couldn't even imagine people that are curious about it for the first time trying to find a therapist. They must all give up. It must be such an overwhelming experience. And through my process of finding the therapist, I reconnected with Sage. We actually grew up next door to each other. And I knew she was a licensed therapist. And she sort of t started telling me about, you know, the tr struggle she was having on her side as a therapist. Yeah. And so I'll chime in. Like Kendall, I also have my own personal experiences with therapy. Um, I went to therapy as a teenager and it had a big impact on me and my personal growth. And so I wanted to be able to be that person for someone else. So that's why I dedicated my career to becoming a therapist. Um, I got licensed and started my practice in 2016. And when I first started building my practice, uh, I had a really hard time getting new clients, um, just, you know, learning how to advertise and marketing because I'd gone to school to be a therapist, which is what I was passionate about. And I didn't have, you know, a business background or a marketing background. And uh, so I was sharing with Kendall how difficult as a new therapist it is to get clients. And she was sharing with me how hard it was for her to find a new therapist. Um, and, you know, and this was something that me and my colleagues were all experiencing. So Kendall proposed that we build our own platform, which to me seemed like a you know, wild idea because I'm a therapist and I don't know anything about technology. Um, but Kendall <laughs> has been able to guide us through this. And, you know, and here we are. And it sounds like there was a problem both on the consumer side as well as the provider side. I mean, for from someone in my sense, I've definitely thought about going to therapy before, but Kendall, to your point, I have no idea where to start. It's such a personal experience building that relationship with someone, finding someone that clicks with you. And it's just so hard to even do that with recommendations from friends because everyone has a different experience. Everyone has something that they're looking for. Um, it also sounds like you guys have a really great founder fit going on, something that you're both really passionate about and that's playing out in, in what you're focusing on. So I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about what is Frame? And if I'm a consumer or a therapist, how would I interact with this app? Yeah, and you touched on a great point. I mean, I think for me, it was really important. I have started a company before in the past, and it was important for me to um, partner with someone that had a very different perspective and experience and was also an expert in the field in her own sense. Um, and when we were building Frame, we really sat together and brainstormed and really thought about all the other services that were out there and what we felt like was missing. Um, mm -hmm. And we built this unique experience, which is now Frame. And on our platform, um, we really wanted to create a platform that allowed you to connect with therapists in different ways, not just 
in the traditional sense. So we offer two services on our platform. Our first service is our digital discussions. These are live stream conversations led by licensed therapists in, in conversation with a volunteer participant. And this is a free product that is really meant to give people a sense of what happens in therapy if you've never been before. So it's really just a way to check in, see what it's like, understand the experience if you're feeling a little apprehensive about trying it. Our second service on our platform is our therapy matching service. And these are for people who are ready to take that leap of faith and um, have that one-on-one -on -one experience. And for them, we, you click the therapy matching, you answer 10 questions, we give you six options of therapists, we facilitate free intro calls, then you schedule through our platform, you do the video session through our platform, and then you play, pay through our platform. That's so unique that someone who's never done therapy before can actually go kind of try out what a session looks like. So what are some of the topics that you guys cover in some of those sessions and kind of how did you play that out? Because you, you've also started during COVID, so I'm sure that that was a little bit tough to spin all of that up. Yeah, I mean, so Sage and I were really particular about the way we designed them. We wanted to make sure they were ethical and made sense and that it was comfortable for people to basically go on camera and kind of do a mini therapy session for people to watch. And, mm. um, and we really, like you said, we really wanted to create a, like a, a way for people to test it out. And so for us, before COVID hit, before we launched, we were really trying to cover the basics. Um, you know, what's the difference between stress and anxiety? Am I just sad mm -hmm. or am I depressed? Um, what is anxiety? What is a panic attack? Um, you know, what is the definition of anorexia? Do, how do I know if I have a drinking problem? I mean, Sage can answer. I mean, uh, these are some of the main questions that a lot of people ask when they're just starting out in therapy. And that's what we wanted to cover. After launch, which we launched during COVID, we definitely quickly pivoted. And I think it benefited from us training these therapists for over six months on doing these digital work, uh, discussions. And we pivoted the, cost, uh, the topics to things that people are, are need, were needing to tackle in the moment. So we've done a lot of topics COVID related on, you know, adjusting to married life, when you're both working from home or what is it processing the emotions that you go through when you're just let go of your job because of COVID, like mm -hmm. an, a loss of identity. There's a sense of guilt and shame. We've talked to HR managers and what it's felt like to let go 30 employees and the, the emotional burden that takes on them as the person having mm -hmm. to do it. So, and then most recently we've just had an amazing experience working um, with some of the best, black therapist in Los Angeles on covering a lot of topics around race and diversity and, um, you know, the emotional trauma that can occur from, you know, experiencing racism. Oh, it's, it sounds like my fiance and I should probably take a look at that first one, <laughs> adjusting to working from home together all the time. I, I learned a couple <laughs> tips for me and my husband as well. <laughs> I, I mean, and I just want to chime in and say that our digital discussions have been a real gift as a part of frame to be yeah. able to give during this time when people were in lockdown, people were home, they were isolated, you know, maybe they can't get to a therapist, maybe they can't afford a therapist because they lost their job, they lost their insurance. Uh, so we were able to offer these free workshops um, or the digital discussions that we have um, and give people actionable tools that they can kind of walk away, well, walk away in their own home with um, and start putting into play immediately. Yeah, I think that that's, that's so impressive that in such a short time, you've been able to create something that's not only very valuable for consumers and therapists during this time, but also, as you said, Sage, really gives back to the community. Um, I think that that's, that's something that we see a lot of companies trying to do, trying to find their, their niche, their way to help during this time, and, and you guys have certainly been able to do that. Um, I also love that your you're sort of teasing out the nuances for, for people who have never done therapy before of what is the difference between stress and, and anxiety and depression? Because you know you hear those words thrown around on TV and in society and it, it's so hard to understand what that actually means if I'm feeling it. When I go to a therapist, like what, what things should I be talking about? That's, that's really awesome that you guys are, are providing that 
window and that context for people who, you know, maybe they've, they've been going to therapy for a while and, and want to branch out and, and see how this happens. But for some people like myself that have never done that. Just on that note, like we've seen so many people, um, there's so many different styles of therapists too. And mm-hmm. to be able to come on and see how different people interact. But I think to your point, like, there's a lot of people out there who are interested in their own personal growth. They want to better themselves. They want to learn. And it's not just for, you know, therapy is not just for people who are in Christ full crisis mode. And Mm -hmm. I think that these discussions also serve a purpose to say, huh, that wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. I'd like to actually try this out. Or I didn't realize that this person would be so down to earth and relatable. And I think it's just been a really great tool to break down the misperceptions about therapy. And I think a lot of the misperceptions about mental health as well, which, you know, we sometimes people have an idea like Kendall's kind of said, where someone thinks depression looks like, you know, somebody who's suicidal and, Mm -hmm. you know, won't talk to anyone or completely isolated when in reality, someone can be completely functioning with depression. And that doesn't mean that it's not worth treating and not worth going through therapy and being able to address so that you can actually live, you know, your up to your full potential. On TV, you see the most dramatic examples and that has totally warped how we think about this in a work environment, in society and such. But before we dive into that a little bit more, I'd love Sage for you to give us the therapist perspective. So you mentioned, you know, you went to school to be a therapist but you weren't trained in how to run a business, how to market yourself. How does Frame help therapists do that more more effectively? Yeah, so at Frame, we like to tell therapists, you know, it's your business, but you don't have to grow it alone. And we really want to empower therapists to make all their own decisions for themselves in terms of they get to choose when they're scheduling clients, they get to choose how much they're charging clients, but we give them all the tools to make that easier. Um, so that they don't have to try to figure out that technology on their own. And also in terms of transitioning into telehealth and figuring out how to manage, you know, your practice remotely, we give HIPAA compliant telehealth tools as well as HIPAA compliant payment processing, which has been huge for people who are transitioning to this, you know, um, non-physical space where they can't receive checks or cash unless something's mailed in, obviously. But, you know, they're having to figure out how can I manage this uh, in a HIPAA compliant way that's secure, that feels easy. So we actually, you know, we give them all of these back office tools as well as the front end of, you know, uh, the marketing and connecting them with new clients, which is a huge thing when you're a new therapist because you go to school and you do your postgraduate hours and you do your training and you do all of these things and you set up your office and then you sit there and clients don't just show up, you know, you have to market, advertise, figure out your niche marketing. So building frame was huge to be able to give that gift back to therapists who are starting their practice and feeling overwhelmed as well. Yeah. I mean, I I can only imagine not only having to think about treating patients, but also running a visit. Like that's, that's just not what you were trained to do. So it sounds like at frame, you guys have really found a way (laughs) to, to address both of those concerns. I'm curious how you supported therapists in this necessary transition to telehealth, like some that may have never even done this type of therapy before, but have had to during COVID. Yeah. So um, quickly after launch, we realized that, you know, everyone is an unprecedented time for therapists and their practices. So we quickly instituted a training um, service that we run with the therapist where we actually get on the calls and walk them through the product and walk them through, mm-hmm. you know, the telehealth experience through frame as well. Um, we're also exploring, you know, running some uh, digital discussions specifically for therapists in the future. But generally speaking, you know, we are, we have a very um, high touch and we offer a training hub with a lot of different information on it that they can use as well um, that the, any frame therapist has access to. So something that I'm, I'm quite curious about, it's been a couple months since you've launched. I don't know how much data you've gathered yet, but how is the matching process going? Are people repeating with therapists that they've matched with? Kind of how is that playing out with what data you have available? Yeah, so it's really early on. Um, We have about 150 therapists on the platform. We're only available in Los Angeles right now. Um, Mm -hmm. As you know, we've only been live for a couple months. Um, And we're really excited. I mean, there's there's such a demand. We're seeing so so many people organically coming through. 
we honestly thought it would be a little harder to, to convince um, clients to come through. But I think with everything going on, there is such an interest for that. And I'll say okay. something we're really excited about is we're seeing that um, the clients are enjoying talking to, mul doing free intro calls with multiple therapists. Um, so on average, they're talking to at least two, um, sometimes three, so that they can get a real sense of who they really click with. So we put the right options in front of you, but we really believe that only you can decide who you feel most comfortable talking to. You know, as a therapist, you know, when I've been listed on other platforms in the past, you get outreach from clients who they're trying to find somebody, but they don't really even know what they're looking for. Or they maybe don't even read your profile and they message you and you end up playing phone tag and you go back and forth and I spend all this time and then we talk and then I realize they're looking for a couples therapy and I don't even provide couples therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so part of one of the, the you know main things that Frame is able to provide is we do a pre-screening where we can get the right clients in front of you as a therapist. So you're not going back and forth, wasting your time, kind of asking them about the basics and when you do talk, you can really just talk about kind of, okay, well, what's, you know, what's going on? What's the main issue? How can I help you? And is this a good fit? Was there any reason other than the fact that it was convenient life-wise that this, this app frame made sense to, lost, to launch in Los Angeles first? Yeah, I mean, we both are so proud of our city and we love living here. And I think so from just an emotional standpoint, we, it was a no brainer to start in LA, but we look back on this and like, it is such a diverse, I mean, this the LA County is the size of the state of Rhode Island. Um, yeah. If you think about that, like there is such a diverse group of people here with such diverse needs and specific needs. And it's a really interesting place to launch a business. There's so much going on here in tech and entertainment, um, which I think creates a really um, exciting environment for mental health. I think another thing is that really set us up is that we thought, okay, it's such a spread out city. There's no way we're going to launch here with a physical office location. Um, mm -hmm. It needs to be telehealth oriented because of traffic. And we built, we decided that because we were launching in LA before COVID was even, even existed. And so I feel like crediting starting in LA really set us up for success when this whole epidemic pandemic happened um, because now we were already built to sustain, you know, telehealth and be, people being able to work remote. Do you think that this transition to telehealth that you're seeing um, specifically in therapy is going to have more of a lasting effect? You know, do you think people will continue doing this remote more and more? And I think specifically for therapy, it has forced therapists to, who were more hesitant of telehealth to uh, embrace it. And I think that it will reduce the barrier of entry for consumers that are like looking for any excuse. They, they sign up and then they panic and are looking for excuse to bail. And one of them being, oh, it's so far. There's so much traffic. <laughs> you know, the, it just might seem a little less scary um, thinking you can do it from the comfort of your own couch if you're just testing it out. That being said, we are really excited for a phase where we go back to in-person because Sage and I really believe that there is nothing more powerful than an in-person session. So much of the therapeutic rely, um, alliance and conversation happens with nonverbal cues, your body language, your tone of voice. Um, but I do think the telehealth will change the way therapy is done for the future. So I'd love to zoom out a little bit and, and kind of talk about mental health in general, because I, I think what you're doing, especially with those recorded sessions, um, really gets at trying to dispel some of the stigma. So I mean, we've, we've seen the mental health conversation come to the forefront much more in the past couple of years, but there's still this stigma around it. And so I'm curious, you know, from, from both of your perspectives, having been a patient, having been um, a therapist, why that still exists? Yeah, I think from my perspective, um, it's really interesting. And I kind of thought this before I even started frame, started frame with Sage is that you know, I think people are aware that mental health is important. I think millennials are aware that like anxiety exists um, and there's different ways to relieve that. But I think that seeing therapy as a tool to, you know, improve your mental health, there's still a disconnect there. 
I think a lot of it has to do with generational, your parents, it was passed down that your parents sort of believed it was only for crazy people. I, I hear that a lot from our users. Like I come, someone's like, I come from an Asian American family and we were told to like keep our feelings in and not talk about them. And I think we're the first generation that's sort of breaking that mold and saying, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I wanna try it anyways. I think um, another misperception um, about therapy that we're trying to debunk is that it's only for people who are suicidal or in extreme crisis, which I sort of touched on before, which is that, right. you know, it's, you see dramatized in TV and movies and it's this thing that only crazy people use. And we're trying through these discussions to show you that there are highly functional, successful, happy people that still benefit from going to therapy. Um, and I think that's something we're excited to, to you know, debunk and, educate people more on. Yeah, and I'll just say that, you know, when someone's in crisis, absolutely therapy can be helpful. And that's, about, you know, is one of the main things that you should go to. But like Kendall's saying, it's, it's once, you're, once you're healing from that crisis, that's when you can also do that deeper personal growth work. Because if you're in crisis, you have to address those needs immediately. Um, you can't necessarily get into your deep, you know, uh, steps towards your self-actualization when you're just trying to survive. I think we're trying to sort of debunk and to take it a step further, the discussions, what they're, what we're trying to do with those is really show you concrete examples of mm -hmm. how therapy can be applied in different scenarios. And if we keep telling these stories that are so personal to people, but and unique in their own way, the more we tell those stories, the more people will hear it and make and understand how it's relevant in their specific life and situation. I think that that's, that's the thing that I find so unique about your business is that it's, it not only fixes a problem for a consumer, for the therapist, but you are really breaking down barriers with the product that you're putting out there with that, those recorded discussions, because that's, it's, it's something that is, is so, so, so ingrained in our society. And it's so frustrating to see that. And I'm, I actually like to take this one step further and talk a little bit about how this plays out in a work environment and kind of how, if you have any suggestions of how we can better structure work environments, structure conversations, we're certainly talking about that when it comes to a lot of other aspects right now in the workplace, but how can we better make a more inclusive environment at work for people that are struggling with these issues? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been interesting. We didn't design our MVP to be a B2B product that we sell mm -hmm. directly to HR um, you know, departments. That being said, we've started on this whole new wave of our company where we are partnering with a ton of mm -hmm. LA companies um, and their cool. HR departments, which is an exciting sort of revelation. And I think that you know, one of the things is that we spent you know, we're not just running group Zoom sessions here. We, you know, like a lot of other companies that are like quickly pivoting to the, to the, to the COVID life. Um, we spent eight months building a custom live streaming platform. And one of the benefits of that is that we've uh, protect the anonymity of all of the users um, when, you know, when they're attending live dis uh, discussions, when they submit questions to therapists and have the therapist answer them, it's completely anonymous. And I think that is actually a very um, constructive way to approach mental health in a work environment because there is so much fear that, oh, my employer is listening to my therapy sessions or mm -hmm. Susan from accounting is going to show up to this group session and now she's going to know that I have daddy issues. Um, and so <laughs> like this is a way for them to engage in personal growth talk to other people at the company that's like, oh, she's having that problem too, while also protecting their privacy and um, not making them feel like they've been put on blast by the company. And I think from the matching perspective, we're seeing is that, you know, a lot of healthcare providers have limited options for who is in their mm -hmm. network. And we're hearing a lot from HR departments that there's a general, you know, um, frustration that what is provided through the company's HR um, insurance plan is not diverse enough. There's no LGBTQ therapy therapist. There's not therapists willing to do, um, you know, sessions in different languages. Yeah, that's, that's actually really interesting that you're 
as you're going through working with these different companies, you're uncovering all of these elements that are obstacles for people that, you know, would want to seek therapy, um, but can't because of financial reasons, because of the health plans. Before we end though, I just wanted to kind of give you the space, any, any last words, anything that we didn't talk about that you think is really important to bring into the conversation? I just really want to emphasize, you know, if, if you're someone that is feeling stressed or you're literally wondering why you keep getting in the same fight with your best friend, mm -hmm. or you're, you're not understanding why your parents aren't listening to you or your boss, you keep fighting with your boss. These are all things you can work through in therapy. Therapy is about understanding where you came from. It's about developing stronger communication tools. It's about understanding what environments trigger your stress and anxiety so that you can avoid those or be prepared for them. Yeah. And I'll just add, you know, in general, right, you know, everything kind of starts, it starts with you. So if you're having trouble at work or if you're having trouble with your partner and your friends, you know, it's important to be able to take a look at yourself and see how you're interacting with these people and why you're having certain reactions. And those kinds of things can be really helpful to explore in therapy. Final point to add after Sage, um, you know, you can find your own therapist or explore our digital discussions at triframe.com. I want to thank you both for being so honest and, and raw about now, the conversation around mental health, I think there's some really interesting pieces um, for companies to think about that came out of the discussion and also to share what you're doing with Frame. I personally think it's, it's really exciting, it's really interesting, and you're uniquely positioned to give back to the community during this really tough time. So I think that that's really incredible to see from a company that's so young right in the Los Angeles area. So thanks so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.